Ready? Sir. How many people do you want living in your country? How many people do you want living in your country? Have you, is this been an important question for all of you? Because it's time, it's time to notice the things that matter, Tucker has told us. And one of the important things to matter is how many people do you want living in your country? And what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Let's say you want five people living in your country. Does that mean we should kick out a bunch of people so you can get what you want? H how many people should decide how many people should live in our country? Should we vote on it? Uh, if a majority of the people wants more, should we force people to have babies? Should we allow immigrants in? If a lot of people want less, should we have a one-child policy like China has? Had. Doesn't have it anymore. Panicked. Bad decision. One-child policy. How many? Who gets to decide? This is a really, really, really important question, according to Tucker Carlson. The size of your population matters very much. The size Why? The size determines a nation's character. It often determines its fate. Yet we don't talk much about the size of our population. We probably should. The United States is growing faster than most Americans understand. If you were born in 1969, as some of us were, you arrived in a country with a little over 200 million people in it. There are now 334 million people in it. So in 1969, there were, in 1969, there were 200 million. Now they are 320 million. You know, so it's, it's over 50% growth in how many years? How many years is that? I, I don't know if anybody did the math. Tucker Carlson's, uh, I'm going to do it now in my head. That's 50 years. In 50 years, we've gone, uh, we've grown 50%. Um, oh, God, where's my calculator? 50 years, we've gone 50%. Is that a lot? To go 50% uh, in terms of your population in uh, 50 years? Doesn't seem like a lot. Does that seem like a lot to you guys? 50 years. I, I, am I getting the math right? So is this a, a, a vast growth? Is this what's responsible for wokeism and the left and Donald Trump and all the bad things that have happened in America? 9-11, all the bad things, financial crisis, well, caused by this 50% growth in the population? I don't know. Let's say if the population of America grew 1% a year, over the last 50 years, how much would that be? I mean, really, H how do you, how do you, is this a lot? Now it sounds like a lot. Oh my God, we went from 200 million to 320 million. Wouldn't that just be caused by a healthy fertility rate? Yes, we've also had immigration. And, and our fertility rate has plummeted. But why is that a lot? By what standard is that a lot? I mean, the new right, people like Yoram Khazoni, Sahib Amari, and, and Sohab Amari, and many others complain constantly about the low birth rates of Americans. Well, if Americans had birth rates like the new right would like, I don't know, two point something, we'd be at 300 million with zero immigration. So what is the issue here? Why is population growth a problem? And is the growth in our population since 1969, which he has said has changed our character, where's the proof of that? It's a 50% growth in 50 years. That's an awful lot of new people in an awfully short time. How many people is that exactly? Well, it's nearly twice the population of the entire Western United States. That's 13 states, including California. In 50 years, have grown. Again, a birth rate that was above replacement. I, I, you know, that is not vast, huge population growth. And of course, we had immigration, luckily, because otherwise we would have shrunk. That is massive and incredibly rapid demographic growth. No, it isn't. And it's accelerating. Immigra now, as a percentage of the population, uh, that is 50% in 50 years. Uh, what are the numbers from 
1900 to 1969. Far larger in terms of percentages. What are the numbers from 1776 to 1900? I mean, orders of magnitude larger than the, than the population growth, growth here. Was that a bad thing? Should we have stayed small? Maybe we should only have the population we had in 1776. How does one decide? Immigration is now at the highest level ever recorded in American history. Popula immigration is at the highest level it's ever been. That's certainly not true of this year, certainly not true of last year. Maybe it was true in the mid-teens in terms of uh, a sheer number of people, but in terms of a percent of the population, immigration is nowhere near its peak. The peak were in the 1870s all the way to uh, pre-World War I. Immigration declined significantly after, pre -world, after World War I. But as a percentage of the population, we had far, far, far higher immigration growth. Immigration growth in the, uh, you know, 100 years ago, 100 plus years ago than we do today. Just inaccurate. So is the number of foreign-born already living here? Number of foreign-born already living here is about the same as it was uh, at the late 19th century, early 20th century, at the height of American power. Uh, during the period where America became the richest country in the world, became the most powerful military in the world, uh, the time that America became an industrial and uh, powerhouse, a, a wealth creating powerhouse. This is, uh, and yes, there were about 14% of Americans were foreign born back then. It's just under that right now. That a bad thing? Was it a bad thing in the 1890s? Is it a bad thing today? By what standard? Is Tucker Carlson giving us a standard? I mean, maybe the standard is that back then, uh, the, the foreign born were all white Europeans, and now they're not white Europeans, and that's the standard. 14 is the same as it was in the late 19th century, early 20th century. I checked. It doesn't, it's not that hard to check. You can Google it. And you can get multiple sources, so you're not getting any biased sources. About 14%. We're close to the high, we're close to the highest today. So, by what standard is that bad? What is the standard? Has Tucker given us a standard? Over just the last year, roughly two million people from the third world came across our borders illegally. It's not true. That number's not true. Uh, but anyway, I I exaggerating these kind of numbers is exactly what Tucker and the right does. All of them arrived with the blessing of the White House. It makes and then why were they sent back? So many of them sent back in spite of the blessing of the White House. It's... <sighs> It makes you wonder what sort of economy Joe Biden imagines we're going to have going forward. Domestic manufacturing is in steep decline. Automation is not true. Uh, domestic manufacturing is at its peak. Uh, maybe not post-COVID, but pre-COVID, domestic manufacturing was at its peak with fewer people producing more goods than we'd ever produced in American history. It's replacing many of the low-skilled jobs that still remain. That's right. We've got automation. Tucker would have a stop the automation in order to save those jobs for those hardworking Americans instead of letting the economy reorganize and creating new jobs for people as it always does. I mean, here is where Tucker Carlson is exactly the same as the left. Automation, technology, destroys jobs. What's the difference between him and Elizabeth Warren exactly? So what are these millions of new people going to be doing for work 20 years from now? Really? Is that the problem you have? What were the millions of people coming into Hong Kong? What did they do for work when they immigrated to Hong Kong? There were no jobs. What did the millions of people who came to the United States in the late 19th century do for work? There were no jobs. Not enough. You couldn't see the jobs. But when people come in, they create jobs. They create new consumers. Jobs come with them. Indeed, if what you cared about 
were jobs. And what you cared about was wealth. And what you cared about was economic activity. Then the number one, the number one and easiest way to create economic growth in the United States, the easiest way to create economic growth in any semi-free country is to increase immigration. More people equals more economic growth. Everything else held constant, if you will. The one way you could almost instantly increase wealth across the entire planet is to open up borders and let people go to where they can be more productive. You're taking people who work in low productivity economies, bringing them to the United States where they could work in high productivity economies, wealth globally would increase almost instantaneously, including the wealth of Americans. That's just economic reality, economic fact that Tucker Carlson used to, about 10 years ago, understand and know and now is willing to lie about for political reasons. Malcolm, thanks for the support. I'll look for the question in a minute. So no, immigrants don't cause the economy to tank. Immigrants don't take jobs. Immigration, I mean, supposedly, we've heard that immigrants Immigrants have been flooding this country. And yet, before COVID, unemployment was historic lows. In spite of the fact that immigrants have been flooding the country, supposedly. 1980s, lots of immigrants came. In the 1990s, lots of immigrants came. And yet, unemployment's not really been a problem in the United States since the 1970s. So, so what's the issue? What is the damage that immigrants do? Except that they don't look like Tucker Carlson. And we don't like people who are different than us. We don't like the other. From economic perspective, immigration is not a harm. Now, Tucker doesn't mention about a million legal immigrants coming to the United States. And most of those legal immigrants come in at fairly high paying jobs. They do fine. But he doesn't want them either. Because just having that legal immigration for 50 years, a million people, just that would get us to half of the increase in the population from 1969 to today. Tom says, uh, Tom says, I wish leftists were actually pro-immigration. They're hardly as pro-immigrant as they and right-wingers make them out as. I agree completely. It's the left that's always traditionally been anti-immigration. The left is the one that stopped uh, George W. Bush from actually endorsing a big pro-immigration bill. It is the left because of the connection to unions always resisted immigration. Unions don't want the competition. All right. They can't all be Nancy Pelosi's housekeepers. They can't all bust tables at the French Laundry in Napa. Well, then let's pass a bill um, that zeroes out welfare. Or let's pass a bill that allows immigrants to come in if they can find a job. And uh, let's make a bill that zeroes us welfare. So in 20 years, they won't have anything if they don't get a proper job. Why is it Tucker Carlson's problem? But this fallacy about 20 years from now, they won't have jobs. Again, he sounds like a conventional leftist. And not all of them will, thank God. In spite of the Democratic Party's best efforts to import a permanent surf class to serve its donors, some of these immigrants will rise higher than Nancy Pelosi expects. Yeah, they will. Yes, they will. Some will fight their way to the top of Absolutely. our society with the usual combination of inborn talent and grit. And honestly, bless them for that. No one invited them here. We didn't want them to come, but we will be sincerely glad when they succeed. Will you? And you didn't want them to come? Somebody wanted them to come. Somebody's paying them. Somebody's employing them. Somebody's taking their services. Somebody's enjoying the fact that they're producing and creating. And yet, 
A country is more than the success of a handful of people, inspiring as that always is to watch. Sheer numbers matter, too. Even if every single person who snuck across our southern border this year goes on to win the Nobel Prize in chemistry, it would still be worth worrying about the effects that mass immigration have on our total population numbers. Really? Really? Now, there he's just endorsing a zero-sum view of the world. If every one of those immigrants won a Nobel Prize in chemistry or whatever it was, the equivalent, would the rest of the population in the United States be worse off or better off? If every one of those po people were that productive, were that creative, were that entrepreneurial, would the rest of the population be better off or worse off? Much better off. Much better off. And of course, we did not go from 200 million to 320 million because of illegal immigration. Maybe there's 11, 12 million illegals in the country today. We grew from 200 million to 320 million. Remember the context, because he's setting up this context. The country's grown significantly. It's, this growth has changed its character. And these illegals are coming across the border. And the, the, the implicit assumption is, well, it's the illegals who've caused this huge economic growth, this huge growth in the population. Where? There's only 12 million illegals in the US. So the growth in the population is either because we have babies or because we have legal immigration. And I thought legal immigrants are people we want, are people we invited. In. But he can't hold, he can't hold both. He has to assume all immigrants are illegal so he can paint them all as uninvited, sneak across the border and imply that that's how the country grew to the size that it is today. So the question is, how many people is too many? In many? Washington, you will never hear that question. More bodies in a country mean more power for the people who run it. Really, I thought more bodies in the country means what? More bodies in the country. Big nations need big governments. Politicians always want more people to rule. So the incentive for unrestrained population growth is baked right into the system. That's bad news for the rest of us. For really, so, so, this, this is, so big government is a phenomenon of big countries? So small countries, I don't know, Israel only has 10 million people, so it has a small government, pro-liberty government. Denmark, which has a small population, very small population, um, has a small government, freedom-loving. You know, I think, I don't know how many people live in North Korea, probably not that many after they killed so many. Does that mean that um, North Korea would have a small government? So there's a correlation. There's a correlation between the size and the size of government. First and most obviously, big governments don't treat their citizens very well. Yes, that's a Reagan-era talking point. It's also... Yeah, he apologizes for that. <laughs> Notice. God forbid. God forbid we have a Reagan-era talking point. True. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.